Hello, welcome to um, our presentation for Year 6 Primary School Pupils, Parents and Carers. So the aim of the presentation is to try and answer as many queries, questions and concerns that you might have as a pupil or parent before you start on your journey at my stake school. Okay, so um, just some introductions to start off. This is Mrs. Helen Jones, our head teacher. Um, this is myself. Um, I'm the assistant head teacher with, with responsibility for year six, seven transition and year seven um, at my sixth school. And your progress leader for the year is Miss Hannah Beatty and the assistant progress leader is Miss Georgia Roach. Um, these are two teachers that you will get to know quite well over the year. I make no excuses then to start with our school rules. We have one school rule, which is respect. We want you to be respectful so that you can learn and listen to your teachers. We want you to respect other pupils. There are 197 pupils this year. So that means there are 197 pupils with 197 different personalities. So we have to respect each other. So we all get along so that we are here to learn and not to worry about anything happening in the playground or people not being nice and kind to each other. We want to respect our environment. It is really important to us that we keep our school campus free of litter and we work very hard at this. Also to respect the environment within the school where there are, where the children have already seen there are some outstanding facilities. We need to respect deadlines. So if a teacher asks for you to hand in a piece of work, it needs to be handed in on that deadline. So we will help you do this, more of that a little later. Respect your uniform. We are very, very delighted with our uniform. Um, we think it's practical, the children, practical, practical, sorry. And um, the children have also helped us design the uniform. So we want you to wear it with pride and to respect yourself to be the best possible version of yourself you can be. Because if you can be, if you can be respectful and if you show respect, then you can learn. So if we have a look at some of the letters that we have in our acronym here, the first one is leave mobiles at home and remove coats before entering the class. We're a warm school. Let no child tell you it's cold. It is very warm. So coats come off when we come in the building. It is, it is difficult because you're not going to the same classroom and staying there all day. You are moving around. So there are things to remember. But coats come off inside the building because we don't get it raining inside the building. Okay. Leave mobiles at home. Now, we recognise that mobiles are a necess necessity of modern life. Okay. However, they can also cause untold upset. We have all heard of terrible stories in the media of the effects of social trolling and cyberbullying. So, although we recognise the need to be able to contact parents in an emergency, phones can stay in bags. If the phone is seen, it is taken off the child and it is put in our heads of house office, it is kept safe and it is returned at the end of the day. E, ensure you have all necessary equipment. I'll talk to you about that in a little while. A is arrive on time. We probably start school a little earlier than the primary schools. Our registration starts at 8.40, so you need to be here at 8.35 because 8.40 is the start of the lesson. That's when you're in registration. There's our R word again, respect all staff, um, pupils and our learning environment, and now work hard and strive to produce your best. We don't mind what your best is, as long as it is your best, as long as you are the best possible version of yourself. We have a look at our school uniform. Okay, as I said, we're really proud of our school uniform because the children have had input into designing it. Don't worry about buying a school tie. The school ties will be issued by school in September. So we have a black V-neck jumper, cardigan or mid-layer top with the school logo. Okay, so you can see the two boys there modeling the mid-layer and the V-neck sweater. We have the logo, we're very proud of the logo, the children designed the logo, so please make sure your children are using either the mid-layer or the cardi or the jumper with the logo on. We've got the white shirt, black formal trousers, so skirt. 
you are going to meet two friends if you haven't already met them called Everybody and Nobody. Please don't pay any heed or any attention when your children are saying, oh, yeah, but everybody wears jeans and leggings. No, they don't. Okay, we work very hard at monitoring our uniform and we will tell you formal trousers might be unusual. Okay, can I suggest that you have a look in ASDA? Because ASDA seem to be able to produce very comfortable school uniforms at a very reasonable price of very good quality. And that might help. Black socks and tights. Um, and black shoes or low heel shoes. Okay, so obviously at the age of 11, children's, children's feet are still growing at an alarming rate. So what we have suggested and what Mrs. Jones has suggested is that if you want to wear black trainers without any logo on them, for PE, they can be worn around the school. So it's only one, um, one, one pair of shoes, stroke trainers that you're having to um, buy. So where can you get these items from? Well, you can get them from Euro Schools, Gwyn Richards or the front row. Um, can I also uh, advertise the uniform swap shop? which is uh, located in St. David's Church, which is opposite Asda, behind the cenotaph and next to the old post office. It is open on a Monday from 12 until 3. Um, can I also suggest that you put some names on the um, tags of um, the school uniform and the PE kit, which I'll talk about in a minute. Put the name on the tags. I was able to return a jacket for the first time in I don't know how long because on the on the tag the parent had written the child's name and they were very pleased to get a coat back. Believe you me, we have got an awful lot of lost property, um, very very lovely coats that are left and are never collected. So make sure you put a name on them and you're more likely to have them returned. So as I said, the PE kit. Um, black shorts, black tracksuit bottoms, black training top, training school socks. Don't worry about the boots. If you play, um, excuse me, if you play uh, rugby outside of um, school, you might already have got boots, but please don't worry about getting them from school. Girls is exactly the same black shorts or black tracksuit, uh, leggings black training top or trainers. Okay, so you can see the training tops being modeled by our pupils on the screen now. Um, they really, they are really useful. Um, they wash, they dry really quickly. Um, they do take being scrunched up and put in, put back into um, a school bag. So um, yeah, they, they're really useful. And again, you the uh, they're available from Gwyn, Gwyn Richards, uh, Euro Schools, Front Row, um, but also check out the, um, the uniform swap shop. So your school equipment, okay? You do need a bag, and that needs to be big enough for A4 files, a gym kit, and dry lunch. So it, we, we, if you have a look at the bag that Ewan is putting in his locker, that is a sizable backpack. Um, you don't have to carry the bag around with you. The bag can go in the locker, as uh, Ewan is doing there. And you can just take out what you need for the next couple of lessons because we are out on our yard at break and at lunch. So you need a pencil case. Please have several pens. Um, the pens break quite easily. So make sure you've got lots of pens, ruler, pencils, um, rubber, highlighters, and you will be given a Chromebook. During lockdown, the Chromebooks became exceptionally useful for online learning. And throughout the, the school day now, what we would like to do is we would like to ensure that all your child's lessons are put onto Teams. Um, we would then have a copy of the school calendar on the desktop and the um, timetable on the desktop. We're still going through COVID. So these are the Chromebooks are going to be really useful in case the child is off with COVID or in, 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 in case we ever need to go into a further lockdown. They will come with a charger. Um, so it, it, the only drawback we can see is if they're not charged to school. So if you can possibly charge them at home, or we will endeavor to try and charge some in school as well. But they are going to be a mobile, portable textbook and support for the pupils. But they don't 
Um, they won't be the only resource the child will have. Okay, you will be given books by all your subjects. And can I suggest they are covered? I've suggested they're clear plastic. Any plastic will do just to make them waterproof. And um, I bring a, a laptop to school and I carry a backpack as I sometimes walk home. Um, I would, I can, I, I'm not, I'm not plug in and there are other outlets that you can buy your bags from. But um, in the mountain warehouse in um, the Pines, they do have backpacks with padded pockets, especially for laptops, and they're not extortionate. So, and they're not, they're not pretty, um, but they are very useful. So school day then. So this complicated um, timetable, okay, um, wouldn't be complicated for very long once you start here. So our school day um, is five lessons, okay, and you move around. As you can see there, you have got different uh, subjects, okay, with different rooms on. So, um, for example, if I take humanities, okay, and that's one Monday, one, Humanities, it's taught by a teacher called VJS. So that is the initials of the teacher. So mine would be THL. So T for my first name, H for the beginning of Hill and L for the end of Hill. And it is taught in HO1. So when the pupils came around for their school tours, we paid close attention to the room names and numbers. So a H is humanities, an S is science, an M is maths. Okay, so you'll notice there are two parts. We have week one, so that's one Monday, one Tuesday, one Wednesday, and so forth. And then we have two Monday, two Tuesday, Wednesday, two Wednesday, and so forth. So we have a two-week timetable so that we can ensure that we cover all aspects of the curriculum. Now, here's the thing. There are different lessons on different days in week one and week two. We always start on a week one in September, and then we alternate between the two, and then we have a holiday. Now, sometimes we finish on a week two, so then we would start on a week one. However, there are times when we finish on a week one and we start on a week two. So the calendar on the desktop of the Chromebook is going to be very, very important for you to know which books you need to pack for the next day or for the next week. And can I suggest that the, your bag is packed the night before? Because there's nothing worse than waking up slightly late in the morning and nothing is ready and you're all of a rush and a fluster before you get here. So our school times, our registration starts at 8.40. So that's the start of registration. So all pupils need to be here by 8.35, okay? Um, if they come in by a school transport, they will be here in plenty of time. If you were dropping them at the drop-off point, they should be here in plenty of time. Some pupils like to have a little trip down to Asda. Um, and the fact, not the factory outlet, like Poundland, sorry. And they can arrive late. They need to be here by 8.35 at the very latest. Our lessons then um, in the morning are 55 minutes. Um, then we have a break at 11 o'clock. And then we have two further le lessons. Our year seven lunch is split into year, um, sorry, into lesson four. So we have 30 minutes of lesson four. Then we have our lunch. And then we go back with the second 30 minutes of lesson four and then we have lesson five and the school day uh, finishes at 2.50. However, we would encourage all pupils to stay for our power hour after school. There are so many clubs that are, uh, that are on for the pupils. There's a homework club, there are cultural and sporting clubs. Um, there is a club at the moment because we are in the middle of um, rehearsals for our school production, which we're very excited about because we haven't had one for three years of Mary Poppins, which is my all time favorite musical. So if you would like to pop along there. Very often the uh, clubs are for key stages rather than for year groups. So you will get to know pupils in different years um, if, you are, if you haven't already met other people from your outside activities. The important thing for the Power Hour is that it finishes around about 10 to four. And there is a school bus that comes at four o'clock. So the children walk to the bus and the bus then goes up and down the valley. Um, it is a bus that's paid for us. So whether or not you're entitled to school transport, that bus is there to take you home and it'll drop off on the main road close to where you live. 
So when the pupils came round school, we had a, a look at, we had a look all the way around the school um, and our school works on three floors. So on the ground floor, we have physical education, creative arts and technology. Um, on the middle floor or the first floor, we have a mixture of maths and languages and English and there's some IT. And then on the second floor, it's split between humanities and science and IT. We've colour coded it here. This will be up in all the um, classrooms, but basically the everything revolves around our school atrium, which is the white bit on the ground floor between technology and creative arts. So if you get to the ground floor and you get to the atrium, you can find your way around, but you won't be finding your way around on your own. There will be lots of people, lots of older pupils, lots of teachers, um, lots of adults to help you find your way around school. And inevitably, for the first couple of days, it's going to be a little bit, oh, I can't remember, oh, we, don't, we don't know where we're going. But if you ask, you will be amazed at how quickly you will find your way around the school. So lunch time. So we've got half an hour for lunch. Um, we've recently appointed a new school cook, um, Mrs. Page, and she is from South Africa and it is her mission to get children eating more vegetables. So regularly we have taster sessions at lunchtime where we have tasted fennel, capers, fissilis, um, very exotic and unusual um, vegetables. And they seem to be going down particularly well. But the choice is a cooked dinner, um, which can be a curry, it can be spaghetti bolognese, it can be a cooked dinner, um, fish and chips. And there's also jacket potatoes, there's hot sandwiches and pizzas and paninis, there's cold sandwiches, there's a salad bar, um, there's a vegetarian option each day and you can uh, have a, a dessert, there's fruit and yoghurt, water and fruit juice as well. There's a breakfast club which is open to all pupils. And at break, we have snacks. Um, and as soon as we finish them, we go on the yard and have a bit of fresh air. We operate a cashless catering system here at my stake. I am sure you were used to it probably in your primary schools. And it's a biometric system um, that recognises the thumbprint um, at the tills. So on the first day, we will be doing um, our biometric prints. So... They're also recognised at the tills and the revaluation, the money machines that are in the atrium. That means no cash will be accepted at the till, till points and you don't have to bring any money into school other than what you need to pay into your account. So there are payment options available. You can do online payments, uh, coin and note payments, um, which are at the revaluation pay points in the atrium. Um, and I will send you the link so that you can have a look at the cashless catering page uh, on the website for further details. Um, so if you have um, parent pay, so you can um, access your child's account to see what he or she is having for lunch and at break. And you can also make payments um, wherever you see the pay point sign, okay, which, are there, which you can see down below. Um, they tend to be um, in local shops like the Premier Stores and also in Philco's. So we mentioned tutor time. So here are the team of tutors that you will be working with. You will get to know these people very well um, as pupils and parents. They are all excited to be meeting your seven pupils. In the past, we had um, a, a meet the tutor event just before um, the end of the summer term when you were in year six and it was a lovely it was a lovely event to be able to put a name to a face however we felt it was going to be more beneficial if we moved the meet the tutor event to September where the children have been in school for a couple of weeks and our tutors have got to know them and you can have a bit more of an informed conversation with the tutors so how do the tutor groups work well there's one tutor for every tutor group and roughly we are working on 25 pupils. So I have sorted the pupils into tutor groups. And what we have ensured is that there are pupils from the same primary school in all tutor groups. That might necessarily be your, your child's best friend. And there is a reason for this. We now want pupils to stop being plus now with pupils, nanti pupils, 
covalent pupils, calf pupils, slant pupils, chira pupils, or nanti pupils. We want them to be my stage school pupils. The pupils make friends very, very quickly. And although it might be, appear to be a little, you might think it's a little bit nerve wracking for the children. Believe you me, after a couple of weeks, we have got different pupils from different primary schools working really, really well together. So two to time lasts for up to 30 minutes a day. And there is a program of activities organized for the tutor, for tutor time, as well as house assembly. So we would have a, um, an assembly every uh, Monday. And then every other day, then we would be looking at different activities. So not only would we have an assembly on a Monday, we make time for a check-in on a Monday. Um, we have wellbeing days and we also have a fun Friday. So each of those year groups, as you, as I've already introduced you to, will be looked after by the progress leader, Miss Beatty, by the assistant progress leader, Miss uh, Roach, and by myself, Mrs Hill. So what will they be learning? Well, some of you might have heard about the curriculum for Wales, um, which is looking at um, developing a new, more bespoke local curriculum for our pupils. So what pupils will be doing is they are going to be studying overarching themes in year seven. And they will be doing that in the following areas of learning. So we have humanities, science and technology, mathematics and numeracy, expressive heart, arts, uh, health and well-being, and language literacy and communication. So the children this year will be doing English, Spanish and Welsh. Now, the, 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 the new curriculum for Wales is based around the four purposes of the curriculum. So the four purposes of the, of the curriculum are to create ambitious and capable learners, um, enterprising and creative contributors, healthy and confident individuals, and ethical and informed citizens. Not only that, it's based on an authenticity of learning, a real life learning. So, for example, we have been undertaking this year um, projects to help our community. So, for example, in technology, the pupils have been helping the homeless in terms of making um, blankets out of crisp packets and also uh, making meals. So they were making bangers and mash. Um, which went to Cardiff to be distributed amongst homeless people throughout the whole of South Wales. Not only that, we have created bug hotels and um, hedgehog houses. So everything has a real life purpose. In English, we are working with a charity called First Give, and the children are going to be doing presentation and raising awareness events to win a thousand pound to be donated to their charity. So we are looking at um, a curriculum that gives the children not only a, 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 a firm educational foundation, but also a real purpose and a sense of um, helping and contributing to their communities and in the future then their country. So what we have done is we have created a curriculum vision. Now this curriculum vision has been created by Dr. Dudridge who is our deputy head teacher, and we are consulting on it on the mo we are consulting on it at the moment because we want to make sure that we have we capture every stakeholder, every stakeholder's view on what our curriculum vision should be about. So we have asked our our our, uh, our teachers, we have asked our pupils, we have asked our existing uh, existing existing parents. So we would love for you to be able, if you haven't had the opportunity, to um, do a short survey to contribute to our um, uh, our consultation. But if you if you I don't want to read it all out for you. But if you look at the principles that we are basing it on, is of empowerment, of equity, and aspiration. Okay, we want them to be powerful thinkers and communicators and leaders in the communi communities that they live in. We want to give the children confidence to be able to challenge what they know is wrong and the kindness to make sure they respond to others and the resourcefulness to find out information for themselves. And of course, we want to give them all the skills so that they lead a fruitful and rewarding life. Our curriculum is knowledge-based and pupil-centred. 
and it allows our children to experience a day that's sorry it experience a day uh, it experience a school which tries striving to transform them into agents of change so we want the children to be proactive we want them to really look at our community and say right this is how we can make it better so if you can um if you can um, complete the survey, that would just give us a greater um, a, a greater amount of people with whom we have consulted, so that we know we have captured everybody's opinion. So, with that, school curriculum becomes homework. Okay, so homework is an essential part of developing and improving independent learning skills. So real learning will take place when you relearn it. So you will have your lessons and the teacher then will say, right, you've got a little bit of homework in this. I want to see what you can do on your own without me in the classroom. So make sure you organise your time and make sure all homework is completed to the best of your ability and meet all the deadlines. You can record your homework on your desktop in your Chromebook, okay? If there is any problems, if there is anything that you can't do, please make sure you contact your teacher. You can do that via Teams or via email, but you do that before the deadline, not after it. It could be that you've had something that's happened in the house and you can't do it. Please email just to say, parents, you're welcome to do that as well. Don't forget, three till four is a homework time. The school library is always available or one of our IT rooms so that you can work on your homework and there are um, teachers there who supervise you. So your first day. OK, so make sure you arrive before bell goes. OK, so as I said, be here for 35 because we will be taking you off on that first day to the sports hall or the gym where we were on transition day. There will be lots of people there to guide you and help you to get to the sports hall or the gym. Miss Patey will be there. Miss Roach will be there. I will be there. And the seven, the eight tutors, excuse me, will be there. Your name will be called. So again, it'll be best listening skills. And then you'll be taken to your tutor room. If you don't hear your name, remain where you are. And then we will sort you out and get you to the tutor room. You are going to spend at least an hour before you are being escorted to your first lesson. At the moment, we are hoping that Year 7 will have a full day on their own so that they can have lots of tours around the school, that we can do lots of ice-breaking activities. But we don't know at the moment, but that is our plan. That's what we would like to do. In the event of us not doing it, we will make sure there will be plenty of time given to the, the pupils so that they can have, um, they will know where they are going for the rest of the day. And there would have been some ice breaking lesson, uh, ice breaking activity in that time. So what to do if you're unhappy? Now, before you come up to secondary school, you probably, some of you might be in a position where you're thinking, I really don't want to leave my primary school. Some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I've had enough of my primary school. I really want to get to secondary school. So it's a time of nervous anticipation, of excitement. You mightn't sleep the the you mightn't sleep too good the first um, the night before you come back in September. And I think all of that is to be um, expected. However, if you are unhappy, if something is really bothering you, there is only one way to solve that problem. And that is to tell an adult and the adult then will help. Please don't get into the mindset that a problem will go away if you don't do anything about it. Quite often, it can do the absolute opposite and make things worse. Similarly, if you feel that you are people are being unkind to you in school, not telling anybody has never resolved that issue. We have years and years of experience of helping um, children when they're unhappy, but we cannot do anything unless we are told. I need to make a plea here because in these days of social media, sometimes parents find out about incidents that might have happened before we are in a position to report to parents. 
We investigate every incident as if we were police men and women. It is like a forensic investigation. We take incident reports of um, somebody who feels somebody who feels the victim, somebody who has done something. Okay, witnesses, bystanders. We really, we really investigate, and that takes time. So quite often, we would like to report back to you when we have all the facts and when we have come up with a solution. So please bear with us. But please, if you are unhappy, make sure you tell a teacher, never take matters into your own hands. And I have a plea here for parents who say, you know, if somebody hits you, you hit them back. Please don't do that. Retaliation, as you know, on the football ground or on the rugby ground, often gets the worst punishment. So we don't retaliate, we tell a teacher and we resolve the issue, okay? But please, a problem shared is a problem halved. Please make sure you impress upon your children that they share with a responsible adult if they continue to be unhappy in school. We are here to help, but we do have our way of helping. Travel to school. So in 2020, uh, BCBC introduced the new home school transport system. Now, this means that they enforced the three mile radius, which means that pupils in Langanite and the pupils in the top end of Cairo um, are entitled to school transport and they would receive a school um, transport, a bus pass. Um, that decision has been made by BCBC. So if you have concerns about school transport, please can you ring BCBC on the telephone and number indicated on the screen, okay? We only operate the after school bus. That's the only bus that we operate, which goes up and down the um, school, uh, up and down the valley. So please, any questions related to transport goes to BCBC. Many of our students walk to school or bring their own bicycles, which you can keep stay safe in the storage areas around school. Make sure you bring a lock, okay? Um, because they no, no, the, where the bike shelters are, there's, there's nobody out there during the day, okay? So make sure you bring a lock. Um, if you were arriving to school, you need to use the school steps, okay? Um, we would advise nobody comes up to um, the area by the car park, by the caretaker's house, because we wouldn't consider that a safe route to school uh, because the buses are coming out and um, teachers are arriving in school. So that wouldn't be considered safe. But the school, um, the school steps are, are fine. And if you were dropping your child off, drop them down there and they can have a nice little fire burning exercise up to school in the morning. That really is the quickest and safest route into school. OK. And just to advertise our school website. OK. Um, and also some emails that you can use. Um, so it's transition at mysigschool.co.uk. I think most of you have got my own school email address if you need to contact me. It's often quicker to contact us via um, uh, email. And then what we would do then is we would bring you back and have a conversation with you. Please follow us on Twitter. OK, um, because we tweet like mad and you will find all sorts of messages on Twitter as well. We will need an up-to-date email address of you because um, we do communicate using a system called InTouch and that works off emails. And also we will be looking at a priority email to set you up on our parent app, our Sims parent app, so that you can look at attendance and different information on that in September. So, your first day at school then, sorry to mention it before you've even broken up, is Tuesday the 6th of September. So we are all looking forward to seeing you then. I hope you have found the presentation um, useful. And please remember to contact us either on the transition email or on my email. Thank you very much.